Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are talking to you on Monday, the 26th of August. PM Modi hails creation of five new Ladakh districts calls a major step towards better governance. 39 people killed in two separate attacks by gunmen in Pakistan's Balochistan. And UN expresses concern over Taliban's new morality law, terms and distressing vision for women. And now for all the details. Hours after the Home Ministry announced five districts for the Indian territory, Ladakh, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi hailed the move and called it a big step towards the better governance and prosperity in the region. The newly established districts, Zanskar, Dras, Sham, Nubra, and Changthang aims to bring governance and development directly to the people's doorsteps, ensuring that benefits of progress reach every corner of the remote and diverse landscape. In a post on X, Modi said the new districts will now receive more focused attention, bringing services and opportunities even closer to the people. According to the official website of the Ladakh administration, so far, Two districts made up the Union Territory, Leh and Kargil. The decision was taken almost five years after Ladakh was established as a Union Territory of India in 2019, following the passage of the Jammu Kashmir Reorganisation Act. Moving on, as many as 39 people lost their lives on Sunday in two separate attacks on police stations, railway lines and vehicles on highway by gunmen in Pakistan's Balochistan province. The gunmen forced people off buses, good trucks on a major highway and shot them after checking their identities. Militants also targeted police and security stations in the sprawling province, officials said one of which killed at least 10 people. Baloch Liberation Army has taken responsibility for the attack. The group have fought a decades-long ethnic insurgency to demand the secession of the resource-rich southwestern province, home to a number of major China-led projects, including a strategic port and a gold and copper mine. Pakistan government has condemned the attacks and vowed that security forces would retaliate and bring those responsible to justice. Meanwhile, activists in Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir held a political convention this past weekend where they shed light on a range of issues from human rights violations to the alleged exploitation of their region as a breeding ground for terrorism. A report. The United Kashmir People's National Party held its two-day long annual central convention this past weekend in Kotli highlighting several issues including human rights violations, development challenges in the region and the misuse of the territory for breeding terrorists. Addressing the gathering, UK PNP leader Sajid Hussain alleged that Islamabad aimed to orchestrate a genocide in the region of POJK by deploying its forces which resulted in the deaths of young people from the region. We will never let their sacrifices go in vain. There is only one way to achieve our goals, and that is through peaceful protest, he said. Hussain added that the movement will continue its peaceful struggle against the puppet authorities in POJK and the rights of equality, freedom and the establishment of democracy in the region. <laughs> Pastoru ka janosaitiya, inu ne Sindhu ka janosaitiya, aur bilaagar ye aap 
का दावा बोला और उस एंट्रेंस के दावे के नतीजे में हमारे जो है वो तीन नौजवान शहीद हुए मैं मैं उनको खराज तहसीन पेश करता हूँ उनकी कर्बानी रहेगा नहीं जाएगी नेशनल पार्टी अजीम आदमशों के लिए आजादी के लिए जमहूरियत के लिए मुसावत के लिए आपके हकूक के लिए जदोजहद कर रही है हमारी सियासी जदोजहद है हमारी जो है वो डिप्लोमेटिक जदोजहद है There has been growing unrest in POJK in recent months with people angry over issues like load shedding, unfair taxes and the weed crisis. But Islamabad has continued to ignore their plight. Activists have long alleged that residents of the region have been at the receiving end of discriminatory policies from Pakistan which has failed to provide even basic facilities for them. Moving on, the United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, UNEMA, has expressed concern after the Taliban, the de facto rulers of Afghanistan, formally codified a lengthy set of rules governing morality in the country. In a statement, Rosa Otunbayeva, head of UNEMA, said the latest rules extend the already intolerable restrictions on the rights of Afghan women and girls. The Afghan people deserve much better than being threatened or jailed if they happen to be late for prayers, glance at a member of the opposite sex who is not a family member or possess a photo of a loved one, she added. The statement further noted that restricting the rights of the Afghan people and holding them in constant fear will make it difficult for the international community which seeks to see Afghanistan on the path to peace and prosperity to engage with the de facto authorities. Last week, the Taliban imposed strict laws ranging from requiring women to cover their faces and men to grow beards to banning car drivers from playing music. These rules promoted as being in line with the Islamic Sharia law are to be enforced by the Morality Ministry, which has already been enforcing similar requirements and claims to have detained thousands of people for violations. It is not clear whether the publication of these rules will lead to stricter enforcement. The restrictions on women have drawn sharp criticism from rights groups and many foreign governments since the former insurgents regained control of Afghanistan. However, the Taliban maintained they respect women's rights in accordance with their interpretation of Islamic law and local customs. asserting that these are internal matters they should be addressed locally and heavy rains triggering flash floods in bangladesh have killed dozens and displaced millions villagers were seen wading through the deep water to get the safer ground due to the severe flooding triggered by relentless monsoon rains continued to inundate parts of the country The flood waters have left many people isolated and in urgent need of food, clean water, medicine and dry clothes, particularly in remote areas where blocked roads have hampered rescue and relief efforts. Some people in Bangladesh have alleged that the floods were caused by the opening of dams, sluice gates in neighboring India, an assertion New Delhi has denied. More than 400,000 people have taken refuge in around 3,500 shelters in the 11 flood-hit districts where nearly 750 medical teams are on the ground to provide treatment with the Army, the Air Force, Navy and Border Guard Bangladesh assisting in rescue operations. The Bangladesh Meteorological Department has warned that the flood conditions could persist if the monsoon rains continue. as water levels are receding very slowly moving on sri lankan president ranil wickremesinghe this past weekend challenged his fellow presidential candidate sajit premadasa and anura kumara disanayake to participate in an open discussion with the international monetary fund The president said that the outcome will allow the entire nation to assess the truthfulness of their public promises and statements. Vikramasinghe highlighted that altering the agreement with the IMF is not feasible and also emphasized that such challenges could lead to economic collapse with the fellow opponents misleading promises of reduced prices. 
He also asked the opponents to immediately present any alternative solutions and seek their opinion during the discussion with the International Monetary Fund. The island nation will go to polls on September 21st. A record number of 39 candidates are in the fray for the upcoming presidential election. And devotees across India and Nepal on Monday throng temples to celebrate the festival of Janmashtami, which marks the birth of Hindu Lord Krishna. Devotees performed prayers, sang devotional songs and observed a fast to mark the occasion. Take a look. Scores of devotees flock to temples to mark the auspicious festival of Janmashtami, the birth anniversary of Lord Krishna, the Hindu god of protection in Mathura, a northern Indian city considered to be his birthplace. On this occasion, priests at Sri Krishna Janmashtami performed several rituals including the holy ritual of lights known as Arthi for Lord Krishna and his consort Radha. Similar scenes were witnessed in Iskon temples across the country where devotees gathered in large numbers from early morning to pay their obeisance to the deity. तो भक्तों का तांता आप देख रहे हैं लगा हुआ है और सब बड़े भाव से श्रद्धा से ठाकुर के चरणों में अपने अपनी मनोकामनाएं रख रहे हैं दर्शन कर रहे हैं आज सुबह अभी ढाई बजे उठ के हम साढ़े तीन बजे लाइन में लगकर अभी दर्शन करने आए हैं आज का दिवस पूरे ब्रह्मांड के लिए बहुत ही दिव्य है भगवान श्री कृष्ण इस धराधाम पर अवतरित हुए वस्तुतः वह भक्ति पति है वह आराधना पति है जो हमें अन्य योनियों से अन्य जो पृथ्वी पर योनिया उनसे हमें अलग करता है मीन बाई सर्पेंटाइन क्यूज फॉर्म क्रॉस पाटन दरबार स्क्वेयर इन नेपाल एस थाउजेंड ऑफ डेविटीज थ्रॉन्ग एंड एंशियंट कृष्णा टेम्पल टू सेलिब्रेट द ओकेजन सम चिल्ड्रेन एंड इन्फेंट्स वर ड्रेस्ड अप एज लॉर्ड कृष्णा एंड हिज कॉन्सर्ट राधा लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज कंसिडर द एथ इनकानेशन ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु द गॉड ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन It is believed that Lord Krishna was born in human form to kill his maternal uncle Kans, the demon king of Mathura. The occasion is particularly grand in Mathura and Vrindavan where Krishna is believed to have spent his youth and childhood. Launi chalan cha, dilai raha cha, gari raha cha, gartham, ab din swari nilar barta basam. अभी बिल्का फिर भगवान को प्रसादी बना मनभोग बना भगवान लकरा आरती कर प्रसादी खाचम अब सके रात भर जागराम बस् भाई सकिं बाबू हई परिवार हे सको बच्चन भजन कीर्तन करने Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India